Hello, and welcome to part two of creating a dynamic temporal scale. So if you watched the last video, you should know what a dynamic temporal scale is. If uh, you're watching this video and didn't watch the part one, basically a dynamic temporal scale is essentially a way to show a different level of granularity, in this case by week um, within the current quarter, but in past quarters, it just displays it by quarter. So. Just in short, what a dynamic temporal, temporal scale is or review. Uh, in the last video, I built this visualization here, and that was the R10 table. <clears throat> it was built on these calculated columns, DTS um, is current quarter and DTS sort by, which just as, again is a quick review. Um, is current quarter, we're just identifying true or false, uh, whether we're in the current quarter or not. Based upon that column, we can then create the DTS column, which essentially returns either a week format or a quarter format as text. And then we have our sort by, which gives us our four digit year, then a quarter number, and then a week number in the case of week. Um, otherwise it gives, it returns uh, just the four digit year and a week. And we obviously use this as our sort by column for DTS. So. That is the calculated column way of doing a dynamic temporal scale. Now, of course, in <laughs> in everything in Power BI, there's more than one way to do things. Um, so today, what I'm going to be showing you is that I built this identical visualization, but it's using it's not using any of the calculated columns from here. It's actually using a disconnected table, which is this R10A table, and then it's using a measure. So and prove to you that so here's our R10A table. So this is a disconnected table uh, from anything in the model. Now, this is actually a calculated table and it's actually based upon the R10 table. So essentially the assumption is you have some kind of fact table, right? That maybe has date in it or a date table that just has date in it. Um, and if you look at this, I and mean, this looks may look a little bit daunting as far as the DAX, but it's really, it's the exact same code uh, more or less as the calculated columns, because we're just basically creating the calculated columns within this table calculation. So I'll walk you through this table calculation. Uh, so it's based upon the R10 table, and we're just grabbing our date column from it. So we essentially what you can think of, we start off with just a big list of dates, every date that's in uh, that table. So then we're using add columns, and we're adding that current is current quarter. It's the same exact calculation, Obviously, we've modified it to not refer back to the table, but just to this date column. Um, but otherwise, other than that, it's the exact same DAX. And that's also true for DTS, which is again our DTS column, and then DTS sort by column. It's the same code. And then at the end of this, what we do is we use select columns to select our DTS, our DTS sort by, and our is current quarter. And then we use distinct to return just the distinct rows. So what we're left with at the end of this is just a distinct list of values um, that were what's going to end up in the R axis of our visualization. So here you can see I have Q1, it goes back to 2016 Q1. So I have Q1 2016, my 2016 one sort by false. And then at the end of this, right, we get into our weeks and we have our week sort by, and these are true because they're in the current quarter. So the th concept here is that, right, this is a calculated table. It's going to recalculate every time the model refreshes. So as we move forward in time, this thing will recalculate um, and we'll, you know, week 14 maybe and, and that sort of stuff will then start to become quarters, um, you know, as this moves forward. So again, still dynamic, um, keeps up to date as part of the data model. Um, but now we have this, so this may be people, again, there's a lot of people that have a lot of hatred for calculated columns. I think some of it's misplaced, but whatever case. Um, in this case then, so now we've got a calculated table, it's gonna probably consume a lot less or less um, storage within the data model, I suppose. Um, and again, people may not like this approach either, so probably make a part three to this video showing yet another way if I can think of one. Um, I'm thinking about trying to see about whether field parameters can be used, but I'll get to that in the next video uh, if there is one. Um, so anyway, so we have this disconnected table. This is going to become our axis. We now then need a measure. 
So because this is disconnected, um, it's not connected to anything, you know, in theory, or, you know, perhaps we, well, I'm not going to go there. Basically, we need a measure in order to figure out where we are as far as this axis and then go calculate the average inventory because um, we still want to have the average inventory in that. So this is the measure that I created. So what we're doing here, the first thing that we're doing is we are grabbing the max of the DTS sort by because uh, that's going to be the easiest thing that we can do to uh, to parse out what year, quarter, and week we're in. And so you can see here then we have variables for year, quarter, and week. And all we're doing is parsing that value. Uh, so in case of year, we're just grabbing the leftmost four digits. And then you're going to see this add zero. It's like, why, Greg, why are you adding zero? Well, because we're parsing out uh, value and we're using a text-based uh, approach to that, then this would return this returns actually text. So if we try to compare a text to a number, we're going to get an error. So the easiest thing to do is just add zero and that forces DAX to then return this as a number instead of a instead of text. But you'll have to figure that out with your, your own data, obviously. Uh, so then the quarter, we're just using mid function to grab the fifth character. So we're only grabbing one character into the fifth character. Again, we're adding that zero. And week's a little more complicated because week may be, you know, six. Well, basically, it might be a one one digit week or it could be a two digit week. You know, we could have potentially solved for that um, by zero padding our, va our week value, but we didn't. So in this case, we're just checking to see if the length of the value is six, which means that uh, because all the quarters should only be five uh, characters long. So now we're we're checking to see if it's six. If it is, we grab the last character. If it's seven, we grab the, the, the last two characters. And if it's not, neither of those, then we return blank. Uh, and then we add zero, of course. So then what we do is we say if week is blank, then average X, we, then we know we're in a quarter. So we grab our quarter information. And if we are in a week then, and where week is not blank, then we are going to end up grabbing a uh, the, by week, right? So that's essentially really all there is to it. Um, the mat, the DAX is not super complicated, really, especially if you take it um, in chunks. But all we're doing here then is we're filtering out by year and quarter and then taking the average X of it, of the inventory. Same thing here, filtering out uh, by year, quarter, and week, and then average X the inventory. So and as you can tell, we wind up with the same, same exact Visualization. So two ways, two different ways of doing the same thing uh, in terms of creating a temp dynamic temporal scale. So that's it for this video. Uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.